Israel has been at the center of attention captivating the world with its remarkable story. Look at the blue marking that Israel compared to the United States. It's astonishing how such a small nation can command such global influence. But there's a simple answer to that question. They are God's chosen people. Israel is God's beloved children who have endured countless trials throughout history. From the oppression of Egyptian kings to the horrors of the Holocaust, God has always been there to rescue and restore his children. The fulfillment of ancient prophecies is evident in the nation of Israel as outlined in the Bible. Even today, we witness the unfolding of these prophecies in the Holy Land. So, what prophecies are yet to be fulfilled? Which ones are happening in our lifetime? After the devastation of World War II, the Israelites were scattered across the globe with little hope of returning to their homeland. But God remained faithful to his promise. On May 14, 1948, the state of Israel was established a testament to the restoration prophecies found in the Old Testament, books of Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah. In Ezekiel 36, 24, it is written, For I will take you out of the nations, I will gather you from all of the countries and bring you back into your own land. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors, you will be my people and I will be your God. This prophecy spoken thousands of years ago foretold the gathering of the scattered Israelites and their return to the land promised to them. Another prophecy in Jeremiah 30 declares the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess, says the Lord. The fulfillment of these prophecies is a testament to the unwavering faithfulness of God. Israel's story is far from over and we can expect to witness even more remarkable events in the future. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 32, the Lord makes a very powerful promise to gather his people from all corners of the earth where they have been scattered in his anger and fury. He assures them that he will bring them back to their homeland and provide them with a safe dwelling place. They will become his people and he will be their God, uniting them with one heart and with one purpose to forever fear and worship him. With unwavering determination, God declares that he will plant them firmly in the land he has chosen for them, pouring out his heart and soul into their restoration. These prophecies speak of the miraculous gathering of the Jewish people from their exile and their triumphant return to the land that God has promised them. It is truly awe-inspiring to witness the fulfillment of God's words in our lifetime. If you have ever been to Israel, you would know that the climate there is dry and humid and the land can be quite barren. However, despite these challenges, the Israelites have managed to cultivate abundance even from the literal sand. Their trees reportedly yield 10 times more than those in Russia. It is a testament of the faithfulness of God who promised in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12 that the seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. All these blessings are given as an inheritance to the remnant of his people. It is not just the agricultural prosperity that showcases God's fulfillment of his promises. Even the political crisis in the Middle East finds its roots in the prophecies of Zechariah. In chapter 12, Zechariah prophesies that Jerusalem will become a cup that causes turmoil among the surrounding nations. Judah and Jerusalem will be besieged and all the nations on the earth will gather against her. Thank you guys so much for making it this far in the video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe and leave a like. Comment below your opinion so far because it helps the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoyed this video. But as we continue, yet God declares that he will make Jerusalem an immovable rock and anyone who tries to move it will only injure themselves. It is no wonder that Israel possesses some of the world's most advanced military technologies. Just as the prophecy foretold, Jerusalem remains an epicenter of conflict. Truly, the words of God are being fulfilled before our very eyes. It is a testament to his faithfulness and sovereignty. The time for Jerusalem's glory is approaching. As stated in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, 
While the enemy may consume the surrounding peoples, Jerusalem will remain unscathed. The Lord will protect the dwellings of Judah first, so that the honor of the house of David and Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem, so that even the feeblest among them will be like David. The house of David will be like God, with the angel of the Lord going before them. The Lord will destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. It is no coincidence that Jerusalem is the capital city of Israel. As prophesied in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3, the Lord dwells in Jerusalem and it is known as the faithful city, with the mountains of the Lord Almighty being called the holy mountain. Millions of people, both Jews and non-Jews, visit Jerusalem every year to seek the Lord Almighty and entreat Him, fulfilling the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 20. It is truly remarkable to be alive in this era. If you've been keeping up with the news in Israel, you should have witnessed the incredible spiritual revival taking place. The Bible itself speaks of these extraordinary times in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28. It is written, and afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all my people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The verse holds great significance in the New Testament as the Apostle Peter quotes it on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 18. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that day is seen as the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy, making the beginning of a new era where the Holy Spirit is bestowed upon believers. This monumentous event leads to the establishment of the church and the spread of the gospel message. Additionally, in Romans 11.26, the Apostle Paul writes about the salvation of all of Israel as prophesied the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. Another remarkable prophecy that this generation will witness is the construction of the third temple. The book of Ezekiel provides detailed prophecies about the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Specifically, Ezekiel chapter 40 to 48 offers a vision of this future temple, complete with precise measurements and instructions. This prophecy is often connected to a passage in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, it states, And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And for a half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offerings. And on the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. These prophecies hold immense significance and point to the extraordinary times we are now living in. It is evident that the temple will be constructed in Israel where various rituals of offerings and sacrifices will take place. However, a significant event will occur when the Antichrist, disguised as the Messiah of Jews, defiles the temple. The Apostle Paul also mentions the temple in 2 Thessalonians, stating that the man of lawlessness will enter the temple and claim to be God, defiling it. Paul warns against deception and emphasizes that the day of reckoning will not arrive until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. This individual will oppose and exalt himself against all gods and objects of worship, ultimately proclaiming himself as God from within the temple. Interestingly, the original location of the first temple is currently occupied by the Dome of the Rock, a Muslim structure. Islamic authorities have officially denied the existence of a temple, but the foundings of British archaeologist Robert Hamilton disproved their claim. Hamilton's evacuations of the mosque foundations after his destruction in 1927 revealed that the Al-Aqsa Mosque was initially used for Jewish ritual preparation for the entering of the temple. Consequently, efforts are underway to build the third temple, fulfilling an ancient prophecy. With most prophecies already coming to pass, the only one remaining is the second coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Are you prepared for this monumentous event? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.